teachers and students. Today I'm going to share one of my favorite beginner painting lessons with you. I'm going to talk about what really worked in my classroom when I did this with my students, what some students struggled with, and how you can modify this project for different levels, and kind of go over what's being taught, what's being learned, and what you can do to make this as easy and fun and simple for your students. I have had a lot of fun. So, this project focuses on color theory. Students learn how to mix tints and shades without using black. We work with three primary colors and white. They learn brush control because they are, without having to paint realistically, learning how to control their brush to paint like straight lines and get smooth paint application. And they're also learning a little bit about composition if you choose to add the composition element, and I'll talk about that later. And also they are reviewing observational drawing skills. So in order to get this image, if you look closely, there's a little gecko hiding in there. In order to get the gecko onto the, in this case, wood panel or canvas or whatever you're painting on, they need to use the X grid method to sketch their image. So last week, hold tight. <laughs> I shared how to do a small exercise in composition in painting. And this week, I'm gonna show you how you can expand on that by adding the additional image to the painting. So you can paint on whatever surface you like. This painting is done on just plain old watercolor paper. When I'm painting with my beginners, I usually use a cheaper surface, like watercolor paper, cardboard, illustration board sometimes or maybe some cheaper canvases. Uh, if I am painting myself, or if I am painting with more advanced students, sometimes I'll use cradled wood panels or stretch canvas or something a little bit larger and of more substance. So if you're doing this with beginners, like absolute beginners, I would definitely simplify the shapes. So perhaps what you would do is only do the drawing and just completely leave out the, um, the circles and the composition or just break the image up a little less so there isn't so much surface area. With beginners, you really wanna get the technique down, but also get a quick, quick results. You know, a large canvas with a lot of shapes can be kind of overwhelming. And also some of these tighter, smaller shapes are a little harder to, to deal with. So I would keep the shapes bigger. So let's get started. Um, I think Maybe I'll just close my eyes and pick one. I'm going to start. I have a black gessoed piece cradled wood, but you can do this painting on any surface. You can use foam board, which is what I'm using to um, protect my table here. You can use illustration board, you can use canvas. I like to work in squares just because it makes the, the measuring so much easier. I also love using the extra. So something to notice here is I am making sure I don't let myself get too caught up in details. I'm measuring out where everything goes. I always tell my students, think about where before um, what, so you wanna figure out where it goes before you get caught up in really what it looks like. So I'm really like not worrying too much about the curve of everything. First, I'm figuring out exactly where it intersects with my grid. And I'm giving myself these kind of guide marks here. And then when I'm sure that my where is correct, I'm noticing something is off here because these two are not lining up. So now I will use the bottom of my eye and I can see that this actually comes up more here. So I'm gonna start with big shapes first. I'm not getting all these mm. tiny little details, yes. getting these larger shapes in, and then I'll go back and I'll get the details later. Chances of me getting this right on the first shot are pretty slim to none. Students always feel like if they got something wrong that they're awful at art, Everybody's good at this, but that is simply not true. Everybody makes mistakes in the beginning, and that's normal. So finding those mistakes is a huge, huge win. So I'm not expecting to get this right in the first shot. Just right now, I'm just looking at where everything goes and not worrying about what it looks like. So I'm getting the placement first, big, big shapes, and then I will go back and refine. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to add our abstraction. We are going to use circle shapes, 
but we're going to keep in mind what makes a good composition. So good composition, you want repetition and variation. So we're gonna pick just one shape for this project. We're gonna use the circle and we are going to repeat it, but we are also going to bury it. We're gonna let some things run off our edges. We're gonna have some big ones and we are gonna have some small ones, some with the centers cut out. The important thing is to take the same shape and just to add some variation in size and keep it unified by using the same shape. So I have a free composition in our slideshow that goes over how to create a good composition and I will link that below if you want to check that out. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to use our X grid as part of our design. So whatever is within this the, the circle shapes that we traced on top of our image we are going to paint in either a warm or a cool color scheme so outside of these shapes we are going to paint in the opposite so if the circles are warm then the background would be cool or vice versa for this we already practiced creating a value scale with our paint if you missed that video, I will link it below and I will also link it at the end, but I do have a video that shows you exactly how to do this. Okay, so now I've made my first tint. I oh simply added God. a little bit of white to my hue color. Just some tips if your brush starts getting all kind of gooped up like that. You want to make sure you get the paint out of the top of your brush so that you don't get streaks in your color. And you want to make sure you mix all your colors really, really good on your palette before you go on to your painting. So it's a good idea to kind of test your value and see where your value is. You could see here that this value to this value, this really isn't that much of a shift. So now I know, I'm glad I tested, I'm gonna add a little bit more white, just a little. You can always add more. I'm gonna add a little more white into my, my color here. So I'm gonna mix it up really well here on my palette and then I'm gonna test it. So once it's good, then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add some more of this lighter value. Okay, so now we're going to mix up some shades. So just like you practiced in the value scale, you are going to take your hue color, which in this case was this kind of nice red-orange color, and you're going to very gradually add a tiny bit the colors complement. So the complement here, I have like a bluish green. Your color doesn't have to be your complement color. It doesn't have to be exactly across the color wheel, but you don't want to mix black. I mean, you can mix black with your color, but you're going to get kind of a really muddy, dirty, a little bit goes a really, really long way. So start with like the super littlest amount of your colors complement. And you'll see, I'm just gonna add it to a tiny bit of this, this hue here. All right, so now this looks pretty safe. This is gonna be, I'm darkening this red. I only did that little corner, so I knew it was safe to mix it in. Now I'm gonna kinda do the same thing. I wanna add a little bit more but I don't wanna overdo it. So see how quickly that went really, really dark? So I might wanna take some of that off of my brush and then just take a little bit of that into my hue. And mix it up. And I'm gonna get the, all the paint out of the tip of my brush. I'm gonna try to keep it in this small spot and kinda of keep scooping it together. And I'm gonna test it and see if it looks like my value has gotten dark enough. And I think that looks pretty good. Pretty good, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint some of my darker values. So 
once you get to this point, you'll notice that sometimes you'll end on an edge where you really can't use the color that you just mixed. So for example, I was I ended with this shade here, but if I put my shade here, I would lose kind of that edge. So I had to go with some some like more of a tint in this area. So I'm gonna go back and I'm remixed up my hue. You can either mix up a, a nice big batch of your hue color or you just kind of simply remember the colors that you used and use your practice value scale and your painting to kind of test and say, okay, does this match my hue color? Um, and it doesn't have to be exactly close, but you just don't want to completely switch your colors or, or have it like totally completely different. So when I just tested, I noticed that this is just my red here needed a little bit more yellow to make it more of that like red orange color. And now I'm going to test it and I think that that looks pretty good. Maybe even a little bit more yellow, I think. And now I have more of my hue. I'm gonna add in some more of my tints and I'm, I'm gonna go through my painting again and say, okay, does anything in here need a second coat of my tints? So since I have my hue here and this shape looks like it needs a second coat, I'm gonna go through and if I feel like I need to second coat any of these, I'll do that now.